morning, everyone. Welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Well, it's February the 19th, 2021. A beautiful Friday morning. A good day to talk about another parable that Jesus Christ uh, gave in the Scriptures. Over the coming weeks, we'll be continuing our exploration into the parables of Christ. This morning, we're going to be talking about the parable of the mustard seed. And uh, this is found in all three Gospels, but uh, we're going to be talking about it from Matthew uh, chapter 13, 31, and 32. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Now, Jesus was a master of using practical examples to make spiritual applications. And uh, I used to wonder what exactly a mustard seed plant would look like. I mean, we're used to seeing a mustard herb kind of a plant here in North America. But um, I had the opportunity to see the plant that Jesus was referring to, the, the true mustard seed plant, in Israel three years ago. And um, we were exploring the ruins of Tel Dan, which was the northernmost city in the, the nation of Israel in ancient times. And uh, as we were walking along the pathway, um, these large plants were beside the path that we were walking on, and my guide uh, pointed out that these were uh, mustard plants. And um, he encouraged us to, to take some of the seeds from the plant just to observe them. So we did, and, and um, the seeds on the branches were so small. Um, they were s tiny in proportion to this plant. A uh, little pinprick, well, even half the size of a pinhead kind of a size to these seeds. Now, Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven will start out small, like this little tiny mustard seed that I was holding in my hand. And, and if you can picture that, and the Bible likens the kingdom of heaven to one of these little mustard seeds that a man took out and planted in his field. And when Jesus spoke to his disciples about this, he was suggesting, I think, that the kingdom that he was going to start, namely the church, would start from very humble and tiny beginnings. And uh, he likened it to a farmer planting a very small seed in the field of the world. Um, involving just a few people from its beginning. But this particular seed was purposed by the farmer to grow into a major influence that would grow up and would spread out to cover the whole world. And uh, the contrast is, is presented from this little tiny seed uh, to a plant that becomes so large and strong that even birds can take refuge in it. You know, birds won't roost in flimsy little plants. But this mustard seed is substantial. This mustard seed plant is substantial. The emphasis is on the strength and steadfastness of the stem, branches, and root system of this plant in comparison from its small, um, seemingly insignificant beginnings. Now, some have studied this parable and have suggested that maybe the birds perching in its branches is a way of saying of Jesus saying that the church is not only going to be a large um, plant, it's going to, not only going to be a large institution, but the birds might represent uh, roosting places for evil, as if the birds were de demons or evil spirits. Now, this thought has been presented because oftentimes in the biblical text, and even in this passage in Matthew, uh, parables before this, the parable of the sower, birds were represented of, as representatives of evil spirits coming to pick away the, the truth of people's hearts. But um, I don't subscribe to this theory. I, I think that Jesus, when he was drawing this comparison, was just trying to express that uh, this time you see it has become a plant that's so sturdy even birds uh, find it a, uh, a good place to roost in. And they won't roost in a place that's unstable. So, um, 
you know, not all references to birds in the Bible refer to the presence of evil spirits, right? I, I think that inference can go too far. Uh, birds were used by God as well to uh, be signals of his blessing. Consider Elijah being fed by the ravens at the brook or uh, the fact that the Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus and rested upon Jesus uh, like a dove or you know the, uh, the birds that were sent out of the ark after God's judgment had come onto the world uh, to find a, a resting place. I mean, these are all positive stories of, of, of birds in a positive way. So I don't buy the, uh, the evil spirits roosting in the trees of the branch kind of theory in this particular case. Is it possible? I suppose, but it doesn't seem to be that in context with the story. This power parable, however, I think can be applied on a more personal level as well as a corporate level because the kingdom of God is not only corporate but it is also planted in the hearts of the individual. Um, after all, the Bible says that uh, we are the temple individually. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Um, corporately, yes, but also uh, individually. We are the church. The church is the people. The parable... Um, is kind of like in that in that measure is like a seed being a seed of truth being planted in an individual's heart and it, it starts out small but God brings rain to water that seed and and sun to warm the soil of the heart of that person and then that facilitates the seeds germination at just the right time and once that seed germinates it starts to grow and a person is born again and in their spirit and, and like newborn babies at first a believer or little plants a believer is fragile and easily injured um, but soon grows stronger as the roots soak up the nutrients that it's plant that that, that has in the soil and the, and the water and the sunlight and uh, this this plant grows strong and uh, it rises from the ground to the point where it is strong enough for even birds uh, to be confident to take refuge and perch on its branches so just pictures of how you know a newborn Christian like a new believer that it's come to saving faith in the Lord uh, they're in a new world I mean their hearts glow with the affections of newfound faith um, but uh, and, and like a blind man that had their vision restored like we've seen in the Bible with Christ restoring people's vision you know, there's a lot of excitement and leaping and praising God. Um, yet, they have not yet, they've got new life, but they have not yet developed stability that comes with seasoning through the trials of life. And uh, God permits trials to enter the believer's life to refine and temper their faith and build tensile strength within them, just like you know, a plant is subjected to the elements to provide strength over time. Um, which God pro proposes that young believers uh, should grow into mature believers with well-developed root systems and heavy stalks, which are strong enough and healthy enough to provide shelter and strength for others. Um, interesting. Uh, there's so many different takes on this parable that you can have, but I think this, this, there's something to this. It's interesting that the mustard seed plant started uh, off small, but grows into a very large, strong stemmed plant that's deeply rooted and has many branches that uh, bears much in the way of fruit uh, of its kind, uh, mustard seeds. You know, that the plants that we looked at in Israel were covered in these seeds. And uh, this is, I think, food for thought when it comes to the growth of the kingdom of God in us.